Hello everyone and welcome. I am here today to talk to you about Dr. House, a puzzle made for NIMS. I am Adonis Gerelis, a CS student from Greece. You can find me on Discord as Planetis, also on the NIM forum and GitHub. During this talk, I will briefly explain how Dr. House works and then walk you through some examples. There is a demo of using fuzzing to drive development of new code. When we are done watching this talk, you will be able to apply your knowledge in a real-world project. Okay, let's begin. First, let's define what fuzzing is. According to Wikipedia, fuzzing is a testing technique that involves providing random data as inputs to a program. The program is then monitored for crashes, failed assertions, and memory leaks. Why you need a fuzzer? A fuzzer might find interesting cases you haven't yet considered when writing code. It will improve your testing coverage and uncover new bugs. It will aid catching regressions early and improve the overall quality of your code base. For Dr. House, I'm using LibFuzzer, which is part of the LLVM project. It's responsible for guiding the mutation process based on code coverage. And the monitoring part is done with address sanitizer, which is a fast memory error detector. And then there is Dr. House. It was made to provide native NIM types to the software under test. You can imagine Dr. House as Butters from South Park, the TV show. In that episode, when he becomes a supervillain, he goes to a restaurant and flips the orders, creating problems for the, for the patrons. In a similar manner, Dr. House mutates the inputs by making small changes that may still keep the input valid, yet exercise new behavior. In essence, it's a structure-aware mutation-based fuzzer. This screenshot taken for, from the Google Fuzzing documentation suggests that a type-length value input combined with a custom mutator is a good option for a structured fuzzer, which is where I got the idea and what Dr. House is. Time to explain some fast targets. The first one is a it's a really simple. I only wrote a fast target, which is some glue code with a single input parameter, which is immutable. I unpacked the arguments and fed them to the soft the procedure that I'm testing. The procedure just emulates a bug. And you can see that Dr. House fi finds that bug condition really soon because LibFuzzer is able to intercept these constant values from the if expression and put them into a dictionary, which is then fed to Dr. House. Then I call the default mutator macro with fast target as an argument. Next one is a matrix library. It's a real world project. It uses static parameters and a reference storage. The fast target calls some li library functions. 
it defines the exact input type. You need a default overload, which makes sure that we are getting valid input, a, zero, a matrix with zeros. And the equality operator is also important because Dr. House needs to be defined. This is an example of an HTML tree. Dr. House can generate complex ACTs. This one, though, does not abide to any rules, so it may create invalid nodes. And you could convert it to a string and then feed it to a parser or directly add it to a procedure that accepts HTML nodes. This example models a graph. It's a nonlinear data structure with nodes and edges. Here it is expressed as an adjacency list. There is an integer index type because for now Dr. House doesn't support acyclic ref objects. I chose to restrict the input space by defining maximum limits to the nodes and edges. And the fast target just emulates a crash. So let's build this example and run it. So I can explain to you the output. While that runs, first you are informed that a custom mutator is found, that is Dr. House. There is the initial seed, which, which can be used to reproduce the run. It starts from an empty corpus, which means that Dr. House can produce valid inputs from nothing, basically. And the maximum size is 4 kilobytes. Periodically, you get some information in the pulse event. There is a coverage metric, which should increase over time. If it doesn't, then it is stuck. The futures, which is similar. The size of the in-memory corpus. The size limit. The execution speed, which is very important. And the memory usage. We see that the crash is found. There is no stack trace back because we need we have compiled with release symbols, but a crash is saved to disk. So let's build again with the faster standalone flag, which will allow us to pass it as input, also debug, and from here you get a stack trace you can use to debug your application. Time for the demo. Suppose we are developing a graph algorithm such as breadth-first traversal. For those who don't know, it's an algorithm 
for traversing a, a tree data structure, we are going to fuzz the code in parallel. Here it is the same library. I should explain that since we have defined some behavior, we could make a mutator that makes use of it. But then you would produce only valid inputs for the graph. So maybe you want to test your library with malformed data as well, which is possible by using the default mutator that Dr. Faust provides. As you can see, I haven't tested my library. It just has one test case and I want to be more certain that the breadth per traversal that I have implemented is correct by feeding it with many valid graphs. So I'm going to implement that now. So let's run this. We need to define the custom mutator for the node index data type which is distinct int i am importing some help uh, helper libraries so stood random the mutate signature must match exactly this so and let's see that so here we need to restrict our, our inputs, our search space. Suppose that we are confident that we can reproduce every bug with just eight nodes. We are doing this for performance reasons as well. Although I could make the distinct type borrow from the int. I'm going to choose that, that instead. So eight nodes and three edges. And the graph that we are producing must still be valid. And the mutator module is going to help you with the task since as you can see it defines various 
helper functions like mutate enum which is going to give us a number from 1 to 8 from 0 to 7 actually And then we need the repeat and mutate template, which is some boilerplate code you can use. And this should be good. So the first class has to do with malformed input, the node with index 4 is not found in the nodes list so for that purpose we can use a processor a post processor which needs to be this sig signature So let me explain what it does. For every node in the graph, we are setting the edges, and if the node index does not occur in the node list, then we simply delete it. Okay, so our graph is empty this time. We can set a minimum limit. So uh, the thing we must do is to restrict for... to write an if condition. I have also forgot to apply those restrictions to the nodes mutator by writing another custom mutator. So in a future version I might add a user max pragma you could use. But for now We are going to overload the sec node and sec node index types. In a similar way that I explained for the node index type. So mutator module provides a mutate sec function that accepts a user max which we are using now and that works we are producing valid graphs that are fed to our function. So here you could implement implement assertions 
to check various invariants. For example, you can make sure that upon completion, every index in the visited set is connected to the source. You could check the loop invariant that the, the Q items are always sorted by depth and other as well. So, future directions. A refactor might be in order. So explain, expect some breakouts, only minor I hope. There are a lot of experiments that need to be done with fuzzing stateful APIs based on interfaces or acquiring a seed corpus from the use of the library with a macro. And also within status, it will be used to power of offline simulation of, simulation of the Ethereum blockchain. At this point, I want to thank Zahari and Status, the company, for giving me the opportunity to work on this project, Andy, my GitHub sponsor, and Hugo and Pietro for making me slides, also the organizers of the conference and the NIM development team. That's all for me. I hope I convince you to try Dr. House. Enjoy the rest of the conference.